in my first Zener diode video, we took a look at a simple circuit using a 5 volt Zener diode to see how it acted in that circuit. And what we found out was that when the load changed, the Zener diode changed its internal resistance to keep the output value at 5 volts. This time I want to take a look at what happens when you have more than one diode. Here's the circuit that I'm going to use. This time I'm going to have two Zener diodes. We have the 5.1 volt at the bottom of the circuit connected to the negative source and then at the top we have a 12 volt Zener diode. And those diodes in the center are just ordinary silicon diodes but note the way that they're oriented in that circuit. They're pointed in the opposite direction from the Zener, and that's because when those silicon diodes are forward bias, they actually will develop about a dot seven volt voltage drop across each of those diodes. Here are the components all wired up and hooked up to our 23 volt power supply. It's a little bit closer look at the circuit and all the way to the left is 23 volts positive. Then we have a 270 ohm resistor, then our 12 volt zener, our three silicon diodes, and then to the right is our 5 volt Zener diode and our negative connection to the power supply. Now I have the power on and I'm going to measure between the positive and negative to make sure it's 23 volts. Then I'm going to start at the bottom of the circuit and go across the 5 volt Zener and then hit each point, measure each point up to the top of the 12 volt Zener diode. And here are the results at each of the outputs. Now I'm going to measure the voltage drop across each diode. And here are the results of those measurements across each of the diodes. Now there's just a small discrepancy of dot zero four eight. I don't think my meter is uh, super accurate, but that's pretty good, really, because when you add them up, you get nineteen dot two three two. I hope this little experiment gives you some ideas of one way to design a multiple output regulated power supply.